Hi juniors, this is Mr. Cross and Mrs. Knurk and welcome to Junior Course Selections. Your course description guide will be available online and actually if you uh, tap into this presentation which we're going to send to you, um, the course guide link you can see here if you just click the course guide link it'll take you to the course description guide. But the course description guide is good to see if you're eligible to take a certain class and to learn what the class is like, what it's about. So as far as the scheduling presentation, there are a few things that you want to consider. Number one, consider future programs or courses and those prerequisites. For example, the ICE program. ICE program is where you attend Carroll High School for half day and then you work for the other half of the day. This has a prerequisite and you must take this prerequisite your junior year in order to do ICE your senior year. Number two, choose core classes and electives. Look at your graduation check sheet to see what you need. Three, think about college and career options. Does this impact my choices? Does my college require certain high school classes? Do these classes meet NCAA eligibility requirements? This one, you're gonna have to do your research. Make sure that you're looking into these things so you know what you need to take. Obtain recommendations, teacher initials, and signatures. Guys, this is going to take a while. So if these, paper, if these papers are due February 9th, you want to make sure that you're getting these initials and signatures well before that February 9th due date. And number five, if you failed any required classes, register for those classes, whether it's summer school, or it's junior year, make sure you get those classes taken care of. And again, look at your graduation check sheet. Please ask yourself, does your diploma require a world language? Academic Honors does require three years of one language or two years of a language such as Japanese and two years of another language such as Spanish. Core 40 does not require foreign language or world language, but two years is recommended, but it is not required. Keep in mind, Purdue Fort Wayne does not require foreign language. IU Bloomington does require two years of high school foreign language. Purdue West Lafayette does require two years of high school foreign language. Ball State does not. So you got to do your research, like Mrs. Knurk said earlier. Zero hour. Plan on zero hour being early next year, 7.30 a.m. start time. So when we look at the course selection sheet, you'll see no zero hour as an option, 4201 and 4202. Students attending with a no zero hour, they attend periods one through seven. That's a normal school day. If you choose no period seven course, course number 4211, 4212, students attend periods zero hour through six, which means you leave early. Students, you need to provide your own transportation to and from school. There is no zero hour on Wednesdays. The last choice, an eight period day. If you choose an eight period day, you do not select the no zero hour or the no period seven course. Students attend periods zero through seven. Students provide their own transportation to school. There is no zero hour on Wednesdays. Next, let's talk about some of you want to graduate a year early. So if you want to graduate after your sixth semester, you need to meet with your counselor. Make sure you have the number of credits and classes so you can graduate a year early. And there's an option on your course selection sheet. You're going to want to check it. It's near the top of your course selection sheet. It says, I plan on graduating after junior year. Next. Six semester grads who plan on attending college that next fall, right after they graduate, need to complete their FAFSA during next school year, which is really kind of your junior, senior year, by April 1st. It'll become available in October in the fall, and we will remind you about that, but that's something you need to make note of. Required courses. English. Look at your course selection sheet. You have to take American Lit if you're not taking AP junior year. Then you can choose between dramatic lit or themes in lit. 
if you're not taking AP. Then there's AP Lit and Composition. And then there's English as a New Language. Remember, you need to have two credits in English 9 and two credits for English 10. If you look at your graduation check sheet and you don't see that you have two credits for English 9 and a credit for English 10, then you need to sign up to retake, to retake those either in summer school or your junior year. Let's continue with required courses. History is your next required course. There are three options next year for you as juniors. You can take the regular U.S. History, two semesters of it, or you can take the dual credit U.S. History course. It's also two semesters through Purdue Fort Wayne, but it's at Carroll. Or you can take the AP version of U.S. History, and you do need to get a recommendation from your sophomore English teacher. Continuing on in required courses, math is the next one. And if you're core 40 or higher for your diploma type, you have to complete Algebra 1, you have to complete Geometry, you have to complete Algebra 2. Then after that, there really become a lot of options. Let's move on to the next slide. Math schmath. Talk to your math teacher or talk to Mr. Cross and I about your selection if you have any questions. STEM courses are for those students who want to pursue a four-year degree after high school in science, technology, engineering, and who have an aptitude for math. You will notice that um, algebra, two, algebra 2 has three choices. The majority of you will be taking Algebra 2. So you have Algebra 2 CTE. For this is for students not planning to pursue a four-year college degree or for those who are not strong math students. Co this covers basic concepts in Algebra 2. Next option is Algebra 2 for students pursuing a four-year degree after high school but not in a math intensive field of study like nursing, education, or art. Your college major may require you to take math class but not at a high level. And the third option is Algebra 2 STEM. Um, this class is for students planning to pursue a four-year degree after high school in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. This will prepare you for higher level math classes. Next, let's discuss math labs for next year. It's okay to take a lab. You do earn elective credit if you decide to take a math lab, and really, for a lot of students, it lessens their math anxiety. Labs may fill up, so if you think it would help you, I can, we encourage you to sign up for that now. And what I found out, math grades tend to be about one grade higher, so if I'm in, say, Algebra 2 and I take Algebra 2 lab, my Algebra 2 grade is going to be about one grade higher than it would if I did not take that lab class. And keep in mind, you might be in pre-calc and trig next year, and so you think you're a high flyer, which you might be, but that's a hard math class. It's okay to take pre-calc lab or the trig lab or both the labs. And maybe you don't need the lab first semester for pre-calc, but trig is harder than, than the pre-calc, so maybe you choose to do the lab second semester. So we just want to send the message that it's okay to take a lab and you do get elective credit. Okay, science. There are so many options for science. Um, we recommend that you talk to your first semester or current science teacher, or you can come again, come see Mr. Cross or myself, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, also, please consider your future career. And please note, some of you may have already completed your required science credits. So science is optional for those of you in this category. Additional science and math credits may improve your chances of getting admitted to a competitive college. So keep in mind, colleges like to see rigor in your schedule. So even though you may not need to do science, it may help you. Let's turn to elective courses now. Um, you'll choose your electives after you've taken care of those required courses that we just talked about and any failed courses that you need to make up. Most of us are going to have 16 total check marks on our course selection sheet. There might be an exception. If you sign up for culinary next year, culinary is two periods a day, so the one check mark really takes two periods a day, so you're probably going to have 14 selections instead of the 16, but most of us are going to have 16. Uh, for study hall, you're going to choose either first semester, second semester, both semesters, or not at all. If there are two lines, this means it's a year-long course. So if you see a course such as Food Science 5611, 5612, that means it's a year-long course. 
Finally, if there's one line, this means it's a semester long course. Example, speech 3536, that ending in a six is kind of an indicator that it's a semester long course. So keep in mind, some of these courses for next year require applications, auditions, recommendations. Um, so make sure you follow through on that and meet your deadline. Okay, so now we're going to um, talk about graduation requirements. And first we're going to talk about box two, employability skills. This should really all be review for you guys, um, but we do need to touch on it because um, some of your options on the box two handout have changed. So please review it again to make sure your desired option was not canceled. So I also wanna make sure that everybody understands that regardless of your diploma type, everyone is required to complete one option off of box two. When you, um, when you turn in your scheduling materials, you will need to turn in the box two and box three selection sheet. This needs to be turned in when you turn in your course selection sheet. Again, all of you will turn in a box two and box three selection sheet. Continuing on with box three, which is post-secondary readiness. Again, we've provided a handout which shows you all of your options and things have changed for box three a little bit just like they did for box two. So we really encourage you to review what your options are again for box three. And you're gonna have to select one of those seven options. And like Mrs. Knurk said on the last slide, you're going to turn in what we call the box two and box three selection sheet with your course selection sheet. Those two should be stapled together. We need both of those back from you. Okay, so when you're looking at the box two and box three selection sheet, every, again, everyone will turn this in with their course selection sheet. Box two employability skills, graduation requirement for all of you. You have these three choices there. One, I completed a box two activity, for example, show choir, freshman year, and turned in my box two paperwork to my counselor. Therefore, you are, will be done then with your box two. Please check the, that box and then put in, if this applies to you, put in how you met box two on that line there. Then, if you haven't met box two, look at the next option, see if that one applies to you. I completed a box two activity. Example, I worked a part-time job for two months, but I still need to turn in my box two paperwork. Again, check that. Mr. Cross and I will know we need to get you those, those papers and so that you can complete that requirement. Last, I have not completed box two. Re please refer to your box two handout. What activity will you complete to meet box two? When will you complete this box two activity? Please check one of those three. Moving on to box three, post-secondary readiness. Again, a graduation requirement for all of us. So how are you going to meet box three? Again, we have that box three handout with your options and those are kind of new because some of them have changed. And this is just kind of really has a picture of what the top of that that sheet looks like, but maybe you're going to earn an academic honors diploma. If so, you're going to check it off. Um, what's your backup plan if you're going to do an academic honors plum diploma? We've encouraged you to do a backup plan. Um, really, that's your and your parents' choice, but we really still encourage that backup plan. If you're not going to have a backup plan, um, you're going to want to sign and have mom and dad sign so we know that you're aware of, of the potential downfalls if you don't have one, but that's your choice. Okay, so box three, post-secondary readiness. Um, as you look down the handout, you see all the options to meet box three. Make sure you select one of these seven options. Complete any questions in your option. Get parent signatures. Moving away from boxes two and three, let's talk about the Career Academy at Anthus, and we often call it Anthus Career Center. Online applications for Anthus will be available after the January 29th Anthus meeting. Anthus is coming to Carroll to meet with interested students. It doesn't mean you're obligated, it's just an informational meeting. But one or two year programs are available. Some are only open to seniors. You're gonna to wanna to go to your course description guide online to see more information. They've got more specifics about the fire science program or the welding program, what have you. You do have to provide your own transportation to Anthus. There is no bus service there. 
ANTHUS applications are due February 16th. Um, it says here in guidance, but really our understanding now is that the ANTHUS applications are going to be online. Please select a full schedule as if you are not going to ANTHUS. ANTHUS student selections will be made in March and you'll be notified if you were accepted or not. If you are accepted, your course selections will then be changed, so we'll have to take out a bunch of your classes at Carroll to make room for ANTHUS, to make room for you to go to ANTHUS. Um, there are instructions on your course selection sheet on how many, you're going to want to circle classes on your course selection sheet to tell us which ones to take out. And we can help you with that too um, when, we, when we see you. So the meeting will be Tuesday, January 29th in the large auditorium to see what ANTHUS has to offer. You must sign up outside of guidance before January 28th, which is actually um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So, okay, so the deadline's tomorrow for that. Okay, when filling out your course selection sheet, please print legibly. Um, include your phone number in case we need to contact you over the summer regarding your schedule. Thursday, February 9th. Again, that's the deadline. Turn in your course selection sheets and everything else to the guidance office. You should have all your recommendations and signatures. Staple your course selection sheet and your box two and box three selection sheet together. So you'll turn those in. Some of you might be turning in a summer school form. Summer school. If you failed a required class or are behind on credits, you should register for summer school. Uh, session one is June. Session two is in July. If you plan to take a summer school class, turn the signed summer school form in with your course selection sheet. If you turn in a summer school form, please do not select that summer school class on your course selection sheet. Mrs. Knurk and I do expect to have lots of questions from everyone, and that's very normal, so please don't be bashful. But we'll be in the commons area in the morning before school. We'll be in the commons after school. We'll be available when we have lunch supervision or during your lunch if you want to come down to guidance. If we're not doing supervision, you're welcome to come to guidance as well. If you have a study hall, you're welcome to have your study hall teacher write you a pass. We're probably not going to be sending out 600 passes to study halls, so if you want to come out of a study hall, just ask your study hall teacher, hey, can I uh, go to, to the guidance office to get some questions answered? And just have your study hall teacher write that pass for you. Course selection sheets are due on Thursday, February 9th, before school in the guidance office. So again, that's Tuesday, February 9th, before school in the guidance office. So again, let's review what you need to do by your deadline of February 9th. So staple together the first two things, your course selection sheet and your box two, box three selection sheet. Turn in summer school form if you have one. And finally, you're going to want to go into PowerSchool and make your course selections online. So some of you have four things to do. If you're not doing summer school, all of us are going to have three things to do. Um, last year, many of us did not follow through. And I don't know that Mrs. Knurk and I are going to have time to track down everyone if you don't turn anything in. So box two and box three are really pretty important. And we don't know exactly what you want to do. So please make sure you do your work. So you're taking the courses that you want to take and not the courses that we select for you for next year. There is an opportunity to earn college credit. Um, there are several junior classes that can help you earn college credit as a high school student. Your course selection sheet will show you which junior courses can be dual credit. Also, if you look in the course description guide, there's a list of these options. And that course description guide, again, it's online on the Northwest Allen Carroll High School link. So there's a handout, a one-page handout. It's titled Notes, 10th to 11th grade. Uh, we created this to kind of help you navigate the online course guide. The online course guide is kind of long, but we kind of streamlined it into one page here, so we're hoping that's helpful for you. We want to remind you deadlines are important. If your ANTHOS application is late, you're instantly on the waiting list. So we really want to encourage you to meet your deadlines early, <coughs> excuse me, to get things turned in. We offer a lot of several, excuse me, we offer several awesome programs at Carroll, so please, please look through that course guide. All right. Thank you for listening to us. Um, this presentation will be available on Canvas. Uh, again, make sure you turn everything in to the guidance office 
on time, that's Tuesday, February 9th, and select your courses in PowerSchool. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.